My dream game room down here is pretty complete. I have pretty much everything someone could want who's been in retro gaming since the 80s until modern day. A mix of what's old and what's new, and a whole bunch of crazy accessories that everyone seems to enjoy. Taiko drums, Samba de Amigo Maracas, you name it, chances are I have it and we use it regularly. But there's been one accessory that's been evading my purchase for a long time, and I'm talking years, mainly due to the price and finding one for a price that was reasonable on a teacher's salary and with a little boost from eating cheese on social media. Now, what controller could I possibly be talking about? I'm sure a lot of you have guessed already. It was made for the original Xbox way back in the day, and I believe had a retail price of $200. Now, back in 2002, that would have been considered a ton of money, a hilarious amount of money, even though nowadays most people spend that on virtual bucks and Fortnite skins within two weeks. Now, what would $200 have gotten you in 2002 for one of the coolest, most obscure games ever made? Well, it would have gotten you this right here. Now, this here is a controller made for the game Steel Battalion, made by Capcom, released on the original Xbox back in 2002, I believe. This thing is quite hefty. You'll see why in a second here. But I wanted you to come along with me as I unbox this, show you how to set it up, and then boot the game up real quick. I don't have a lot of time to play it, but I thought it'd be cool to go through the controller with you guys and show you some of the cool stuff it has, how it's connected, and how it goes together. Now, before everyone asks, because everyone has been asking me about this, I got this off of Mercari. It took me about six years of looking at these things between eBay, Mercari, and other buy-sell trade sites until I found one at a price that I was willing to pay for. One of the big issues is they're starting to break. They're starting to wear down, and if you have them, you want to keep them in good operating order. It's not like you can go buy parts for these off the shelf tomorrow. So finding them in one piece, in the box, all together for a reasonable price is pretty difficult. So to answer that question, it was on Mercari, it was $300, it was the only one on there, and I don't think it's something that people are looking at all the time to purchase, so it, people kind of forget about it or just don't know it exists. I think I got a decent deal on it, $300, complete in box with everything original, and it's in really good shape. The Lister even said they played it a couple times, put it away, and never touched it again. Great. Their loss is my gain. Before we unbox it, I want you to know this thing is quite hefty. I'm not sure how many pounds it is, but it makes quite a drop. So let's get inside here and see what's going on. I gotta preface the whole video by saying this is the Japanese version. It came from Japan, that's why the box says Pacific Rim Army, all that good stuff, because this is the Japanese edition, which is much cheaper. I know there's a couple different button combinations, there's like a blue button one floating around out there. I don't know much about the whole history of the Steel Battalion games and the controllers to get into that. All I want to show is how this opens up. We got two little cardboard latches right there, we pull it back. Then we have this heavy plastic uh, handle here, which is also in good shape. Again, most of these things are broken. Like these things look pretty much brand new. And I've had this box open a lot. I don't know what this is. It kind of floats here. It's starting to fade though. Maybe there's something cool in there. Oh, there's something cool in there. Okay, I'm about to rip this open, but it's some kind of registration card it looks like. We'll slide that back in there. I'm about to tape this or just take it off and it's not holding up very well. Oh, this is what takes so long. Oh, I'm gonna mess with this thing. Okay, so that's kind of dangling there. Uh, it was in better shape when I got it, but this thing has been, when I say all over God's three acres, I actually mean it. I've taken this a lot of places. I've had a lot of people play with this, uh, school and things like that. So a little worse for the wear already. Okay, we got our instruction stuff in here, and there's a lot of instructions in here. There's how to set it up, how to build it. Obviously all in Japanese. This is only damage I could see. There's some, I guess it's mold growing on this from probably being stored in a damp area, but it's a very detailed uh, manual of all the stuff you need to play the game. I believe this here is how you set it up, or it's a, okay, yeah, it's a recreation of it. No need to get into all that. It's just the stuff you'll see. We have our Japanese copy of Seal Battalion right there. That's one piece of cardboard. After that, we get another piece of cardboard for some reason, and then we see the first signs of this massive controller here. Now, in the game Seal Battalion, you're piloting some kind of mech. These are your controls. There's a couple things going on here. First off, there's this bag here uh, with a sticker, some John Malkovich sticker on it, I have no idea. These brackets and the screws inside are important. You'll see why in a second here. We'll put that to the side. Then we take these out. We have our first control stick. We have our second control stick, which just kind of sit down here in the box somewhere. I'll put these to the side as well because we need the space. Then after that, we have this piece here, our main control panel. Put this to the side. Now, what really makes the weight of this thing so much more uh, great are the foot pedals here. We have three foot pedals. We have a gas, a brake, and then we have a quick dodge, I believe. Now, as far as I know, this is complete in box. Everything you see in here is what would have come there uh, the day one when you would have bought this and brought it home from the store. Is that accurate completely? I don't know. There might be something missing, but the cardboard's all here. Everything that keeps that controller secure in place during transport should be all here. And either way, it doesn't go very far. It goes to school and back, and that's about it. So what I'm gonna do now is take the box and put it away. Take our main center unit out. Take our two control sticks. Put those there. Take this control stick. All right, so we got all of our plastics put away over there. The only problem with this thing is taking out the box and setting it up is such a time consuming and a space consuming process 
that I don't want to do it that frequently, but I have been doing it a lot lately. Just kind of show people what it is and give them the chance to experience it because this here is one of the most unique controllers I've ever seen. It's certainly the most complicated one. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take out my brackets here. These two plastic pieces right here, I'll put them down. There are machine uh, Allen head screws in here, machine screws. I believe there's eight of them in here. I'm only gonna take out uh, four mainly because I don't want to kind of have to put it all together and then take it all back apart to put it away. So I'll take out four because it's going to sit still and you should use the, all four if you're putting this up for a long term or you're putting it somewhere it's going to be used a lot. But I'm going to do two on each side and uh, you'll see how it goes together in a second here. First things first, it's not complicated. Move the pedals out of the way. It looks far more intimidating than it actually is. So you have this center panel here is where both these six connect to. You can see we have a key here, okay, and that's where that bracket goes. It goes underneath, meets up here, meets up here, more or less like this but it does, it does it underneath of it. A little awkward, but we'll make it work. The cool thing here is how these actually connect to this main panel. Like how do you get so many buttons out of a basic Xbox controller? Well, you do it by using an IDE connection. I believe these are IDE cables. For those of you youngins, this is how hard drives used to get hooked up to a motherboard and a computer. You could chain them together and that was before SATA. And now I think it just goes right <laughs> straight to the, bo the, the board itself. Yeah, I think they were like M2s, so they just go straight to the board. I haven't built for a while. So anyways, my biggest complaint with that con this controller is having to assemble it and getting all these things plugged in. So let me try to make this IDE connection here real quick. And you feel like you're breaking it and you don't want to pull too hard because these cables aren't exactly durable. Uh, but there is some wiggle room there. Okay, so we plugged our IDE cable in here and then what we'll do, we'll just see how it keys in. This part here, this main control panel is gonna key in up through here. And now hopefully you can see how the bracket works. Okay, and the bracket goes over that. And then these screws, one, two, three, four go there. Again, I'm only using two today because I don't want to get too far into this here. But you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, how do I get these screws screwed in? What am I supposed to do? Have a bunch of tools with me? They already thought of that. Look right here in the main control panel. There is the exact Allen wrench with the place to store it of what you need to actually screw this in here. Right down into there. So I got one there. I'll drop it down in there. And it's oddly, it's very well designed to the point where you can get the screw in there pretty simply, actually, pretty easily. Now, this is where it's almost a two person job because holding this up and trying to get these screws in is quite annoying. You don't want to break the sticks or drop your tools everywhere. Okay, so we got one side done. We're almost there. One thing before I put this on, I want to point out is that when I got this, I thought something was wrong with this control stick because it stays where you put it. Not the case. This is how it's supposed to be. I had to look it up to make sure I wasn't crazy. But if yours comes like this and the stick kind of stays where you put it, that's okay. That's supposed to happen. And you can calibrate things in the menus. It's really, really user friendly, actually. We'll do the same thing. We'll make that same IDE connection over here. Every time I do this, I get nervous. I get very nervous and bend a pin. ID cables went away. They're bulky and heavy, sure, but man, the pins and how easy they were to bend is what makes you nervous. Okay, the connection's made. We'll do the same thing. We'll key that up. Okay, we've got those cables stuffed in. We'll take our bracket right back in there. And again, I'm gonna try to hold it up so I can just drop the screw in. Find my Allen wrench, which I misplaced already. Oh, there you are. Give that a quick torquing down right there. Not too hard, obviously. It's machined, so it'll go right in. Okay, now we got our sides on here with our brackets and our screws. I'll take this original authentic Allen wrench, $500, no low blowers, I know what I got. Put it back here in the provided storage place, which snaps right in down. It's really nice, actually. They thought of everything with this controller. Maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't yet, but I think down here, you have a list of all the developers who worked on this. I'm almost positive that's what that is. And I believe there's Shinji Mikami. I think he's Resident Evil, I'm not positive, but a little cool Easter egg down there that I'm sure a lot of people thought was pretty neat when they got it. So I have this massive beast right here, and this is the YouTube thumbnail. We're not quite done yet. I'll plug this into the Xbox right now over here. We're almost done. So we have the whole front part set up here, obviously, but now we have to plug in this here, which looks like a Sega Saturn AV cable. Plug this in here, right to the back. It can only go one way. Just be careful again. Don't force it. Don't bend the pins. Then we'll put this under the table, obviously. So this is another expensive component to this game setup here. You can get the Japanese controller a lot cheaper than the US controller, but you won't get the American game, which I believe was only available bundled with the controller. So you have to find a separate copy of it. Now it'll cost you about another $100. That's how much I have tied up in this right now. If you're not in a position where you can do this or you don't have the finances, please don't go out and buy something like this. It's definitely an expensive investment. I will say this though, if you can, you're a collector, you're looking to have something cool in your collection that's a lot of fun and you are a collector that likes when people enjoy the things that you have, go out and get this. This is definitely worth it. If you have the money to spare, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely a cool thing to bring out at a party and people can try it out. And we had a great time. We've done it a few times. We've had a great time just because it's so unique and interesting. But if you're a collector who likes things sitting on their shelves behind uh, glass and plastic and constantly dusts and maintains and wants everything to be perfect, 100%, you know, 100% perfect all the time, don't, don't buy this. Don't buy this. Leave it out there for people who want to actually enjoy it and play it. Even though by doing that, you're going to break it eventually. You might break it eventually, but 
it's meant to be enjoyed. Anyways, I digress, let's get going. So we'll power on our Xbox over here, our original Xbox One. We'll pop out House of the Dead 3, and we'll put in this very, very expensive copy of Steel Battalion. Luckily I have one functioning Xbox still, thank God. We've got to change over our CRT input here. There it is, okay, we're all set there. Now hopefully it just boots right up and I don't have to worry about putting a controller to it. Or maybe I can just use this thing, use this. Oh, there we go, okay, good, okay, that worked. All right, we're gonna play Seal Battalion the way it was meant to be played on a CRT, a very old but very nice CRT. We played it on the big OLED over there and it looks about the same. It's, the difficult part about this game is it's not the easiest game to read. It's not like muddy or anything, but it's definitely showing its age. And some kind of HD patch would be great just to clean up the texture so you can really tell what's going on. But again, another digression. We'll sit down here and we'll get ready to play. Now you'll notice you'll have to shift gears. So we'll start in neutral over here for when we start playing. Let me get as set up as I can. Pedals a little bit further out. And you won't move unless you press gas. I know it seems obvious, but you really don't move. I'm also keeping the sound off because of copyright issues. So let's get going here. So the one thing about this game that I didn't know that you should know before you start playing is when you make a new character and you start your missions, if you die in the game, your character gets deleted. So if your character is defeated, is blown up on the battlefield, your character's gone. It just wipes it from your hard drive completely. Taking the realistic simulation thing to a whole new level. Now they do offer this button over here. This is the eject button. So if you don't press it fast enough while you're on a mission and you're getting just completely uh, obliterated, you will lose that character and you'll lose all your progress. That kind of makes it difficult to keep playing this game like a party or something like that because you know if you want to try the mission that someone else failed, it can be difficult if they don't eject quick enough. So just be aware of that. If your character is defeated in battle here, and you didn't eject fast enough, you will lose that character and all that progress. And as far as I know, there's no way to get it back. So we'll start this mission one. We have a mission saved. That's not the introductory mission here that we can play. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but hopefully you get an idea of how this works. We'll just select this guy here. I know there's more upgrades and things you can do uh, with your VT and things like that, your, your mech as time goes on. I have not gotten to that point yet. I haven't put enough time in this game. Loading time is weird. It's both uh, long and short. Like, oh, load it up that much, but then it takes a while to get from this point to the actual game. So what made this game so much fun for everyone who's played it and tried it is the boot up sequence for your mech. So you really have to do things that you would do if you were in a mech. First thing, close the cockpit hatch. You'll notice it closes over you like this, brings up your screen. The next thing is hit that ignition button here. Once we press that ignition button over there, we'll go over to, I believe these are our life support systems or fuel systems. And this is the fun part is toggling all the switches on. Something very satisfying about doing that. Now we're all ready to go. We have to wait until those green lines line up with our little carrot up there, and then we press start. Oh, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, and there we go. Now we're all ready to go, kind of. First thing we have to do is shift into first, and you do need to keep shifting, and you'll forget that very quickly. We'll hit the gas, so we start moving, and off we go. You can see my miles per hour down there are starting to pick up. I'm at 20. I'm going to shift up, and we'll be able to go a little bit faster. I'm going to shift up again around here. Then I'll shift up one more time, and I'll probably just hang out in this for a little bit. So the left stick controls this movement here, uh, just left and right, and this controls your aiming reticle. And this is where things kind of start getting complicated for those who haven't experienced flight sims and things like that. It can be a little bit difficult to maneuver it and get a sense of space, but it's something that you can pick up on pretty quick. You just have to know that you're feeling the full weight of the mech. The reason why this is a cool simulation game over anything else, not like an arcade style game, is because every movement takes a while. You really feel every single time you move your guns, you move your arms, you move your legs, you feel all that. Now I am stopped, so now I gotta go back to first. Oh man, I slowed down too much. Back in the first, then back in the second. Pedal the metal, let's go third, and let's start shh, getting these guys here. We gotta take out their artillery. On my finger over here, I have my one gun, which is just hold down, fire, fire. I also do this lock on thing where I lock on and then use my main weapon to fire some kind of missile or, uh, yeah, something like a missile at it. All this stuff you see represented here on the control panel is represented in your control panel right in front of you, which is probably difficult to see on a CRT on a YouTube video, but it's all there. That's all I'm gonna get into today. I really just wanted to unbox it and show you guys this really cool, unique controller and what has been a great investment for me, my family, my students in terms of fun and cool experiences here at game night. Everyone loves this thing, even if they're not good at it. And frankly, no one's been good at it yet. This is certainly one of the most unique experiences you can have at the video game and something that I spent a long time debating whether or not to buy for years upon years. I put in a lot of offers over the years, a lot of bids, a lot of lost everything, but eventually it all worked out and here we are with our copy of Steel Battalion for the original Xbox, along with this amazing, massive, but really cool controller. I hope you enjoyed that unboxing setup and a little bit of play testing of the Seal Battalion game and this massive controller. It's a really cool piece of gaming history that unfortunately is kind of lost to time at this point. There's a lot of great people out there doing stuff to preserve this game and these controllers, but I'm not sure how much longer they'll last. I'm glad I got a copy of it. I'm glad to add it to the collection here and make it available for a lot of people to try out and play with. I hope they enjoy it and I hope you enjoyed this too. We'll see you in the next one.